Assalamu alaikum hello and namaste welcome to another inspiring episode 144 of the limelight i'm your host farin here i'm a podcast coach voice coach and also an author i have written a book called before you chew that gum 11 things to know before you get married for south asian men and women and it's available on amazon.in also in us and uk well today on the hot seat we have a very beautiful personality she is an amarathi holistic well-being practitioner and she is also the founder of chikara global a new women's collective so listeners please welcome our guest dr mariam assalamu alaikum Dr. Maryam, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good too. It's a pleasure to have you on my podcast. Thank you. It's a pleasure to connect with you. Likewise here. So, oh, Dr. Maryam, I have read so many things about you. I know your work. I've seen it. And I want you to tell our listeners about yourself. Okay. So, I started my career as a family physician. and um uh, during my um, experience in healthcare i realized that there's much more to health and well-being so of course there's the physical element there's the psychological element there's the spiritual element and the emotional element and and since then i've been trying to sort of create a comprehensive way of uh, working with with our bodies with our minds with our spirits to achieve well-being that's fabulous and uh... I really love your work. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um on Instagram I've seen you're very active and uh, you have a venture called Chikara Global. Can you just tell more about it? Yes. So the year before um COVID I started teaching a type of yoga called Kundalini yoga and or I started taking the teachers training. which involved a lot of traveling and meeting um a lot of amazing women and men from around the world who work with their bodies and minds and, and who teach yoga themselves and are, are on their spiritual journey and at the same time i met a lot of communities of artisans and uh, artists and women in the creative industries and uh, i created some kind of network by just you know learning about what they do and and supporting their businesses when covid happened in 2020 i had to sort of connect with them virtually because we couldn't travel and so we created uh, circles where we're learning together and growing together coaching mentoring creating solutions you know whether it is offering online classes selling the products online if they had products um, or just even partnering with with different stakeholders that can help them continue the work that they do and especially for women who might have been um facing difficulties at that time so that um developed into chikara chikara means power and in arabic it's qitara which is like a, a musical instrument like the sitara you, you have it in uh, in the actual sitara yeah um and um and basically um the aim is to bring in harmony through the collective power of women but it's also about you stepping into your power as a woman and that involves coaching it involves martial arts it involves you know identifying your passion your purpose um a lot of resilience a lot of dedication um and then also having the opportunity to showcase the work that you, you do whether it's through collaboration or through exhibitions and different things that we we work with women to sort of support their uh, growth lovely a beautiful initiative where you have made this network of different kinds of people and brought out their skills and you're helping them sell their products and learn from each other yes and uh, a big part of that is them embracing their voices so when you are creating a product or when you're in the creative industry or even when you're teaching just especially with women it's important to really embody your voice because that's your authentic truth and of course there's the process of getting to know your yourself and getting to know your values and getting to see the areas that you need to work on and develop and heal and resolve and the areas that 
are your strengths that are contribution to earth. But once you're there, once you find your authentic truth and your voice, then it's important to share it with the world and to communicate it. And here I found it's very important to work with people like you who, who talk about voice coaching and, and engineering, um, as you call it, because that is what you need to do to express your truth to the world and share it and create impact. So maybe you can tell us also about, you know, uh, the work that you do and how it, it applies to women. Oh, yes. Especially I have been podcasting from past five years. So, uh, you know, Dr. Mariam, I have heard around more than 100, 150 women talking and I have recorded their voice. So each woman, they have a very authentic kind of voice, very different from each other, the way they talk, the way they stress on words. When I analyzed all this, I felt I could give my share of knowledge and make that happen that when they speak out, they talk confidently, uh, keeping in mind all the five parameters of the voice, which I judge them across. Because as you said, the importance of knowing yourself, voicing out in the times like this for a woman is very important, right? So. Yes, I designed a kind of program where if someone, be it a male or female, they find it difficult to, you know, talk in public, talk in front. They are very shy. They are not confident. They are doing online or they are a teacher, or executor, or anybody. And they want to talk so much, but they are not able to voice out. I help them out and I give them tips to open up their voice, how they can stress on words so that the other person who is listening to them gets the picture of what they are emphasizing on and also help them make their image and brand stronger in front of the public. So that's about voice coaching I do. Now, voice engineering is just that when I podcast, I get the audio file and I do all the editing so that, you know, my podcast is like beautiful for the people to listen to. Yeah, that's about my work. Wow, that's amazing. And I think like that communication tool is important for also your personal life and your professional life because that's how you're just connecting with the world. I found, you know, like, because of the work I do with, with healthcare and holistic well-being, a lot of people suffer from thyroid conditions and the thyroid is connected to your throat chakra and also your voice and your emotions. And um, sometimes it's an autoimmune disease and uh, with autoimmune conditions, medically, we did not identify the reason behind why your body starts attacking itself. And a lot of the time it has to do with emotions also that are stored in the body or that are creating a block in the meridians. In Chinese medicine, they speak about the meridians and the energy flow. And so the jaws, the teeth, the, the throat, the thyroid, are, they always get infected when people are unable to express their uh, emotions or their truth or their stories and tell it to the world especially if it's important for them to do so so i think the work that you do has a lot of implications um, holistically also you know not it's not just about sending a message or, or branding yourself which is great but it's also about living a healthy uh, lifestyle yes thank you so much and as you mentioned that what we feel, the feelings, and then if we don't express those feelings, I have read that it creates vibration, it gets stored in different parts and creates pain, you know, as you say, like, you know, if it's thyroid, they're not able to voice out, maybe that energy gets like blocked over there and they are not able to express their feelings, their fears with anybody else. Yes, and with women, I think um, we talked about confidence, right? And yes. even like in a boardroom or pitching to an investor or 
participating in a political scene or women face challenges in expressing themselves, partly due to confidence, but also because for a very long time, it was sort of celebrated when women were quiet. Yes. Uh, and so we need to change the narrative to celebrate your voice. And I find that to be very important, especially with the women that uh, I work with. I work also with women who are like people of determination or women who to volunteer and work with health and well-being. And so those people usually are very sensitive and sometimes they choose to withhold their words rather than share them. So it's also about building the confidence so that women around the world celebrate their voices and start expressing them and sharing their, their purpose with the world. Yes, yes, I totally agree on that. And one tip I can give about if you're not able to speak out and if you feel shy, what you can always do is record your own voice and listen to it. That will help you to make out how you sound outside. And as and when you will hear, you can later tweak in things like, you know, I didn't say this word correctly. I need to put more stress over there. I need to change my tone. So all that, if you listen to your own voice with a recorded like voice, maybe it's a WhatsApp message to yourself or recorded through the voice recorder if you can do that that will surely help you to listen to your voice because when people start something like going out and talking they hesitate but if they can do a video or a voice message and listen to that it will give them a bit of confidence that yes i sound good i can do it that is amazing. You know, um, in the yoga training I was taking, mm -hmm. each, each student needs to have like a 40 day practice, okay. um, especially in the beginning, like, um, and, and the practice that was given to us as a cohort in the meditation was to record ourselves and listen to it for 40 days. Wow. And we, and we were all like thinking, oh, why did we get this meditation? There are so many in, in that practice, there are so many meditations that we wanted to try out and we wanted to explore. So we thought, why, why are we given that, you know, just to listen to our own voice reading something for 40 minutes, by the way, <laughs> right. every day for 40 days. So it was, it was interesting. But then when we finished, you know, every, every day you would learn something more about yourself by hearing your own voice. Yes. Um, and then the confidence gets built because as a teacher, when, when we teach Kundalini Yoga, you need to have, of course, the confidence, but also you have to be able to project your voice to the class. Sometimes the class is 100 students and it's a big place. So your voice needs to resonate. And I think every day we heard our recording, it was strengthening our confidence and our voice and our ability to, to speak uh, and to share and to project. So I love this tool. I think uh, everyone should should do it, especially if they want to pursue um, not just a career, but a lifestyle where they're sharing, um, you know, their stories with the world. And nowadays, it's so important to tell our stories and to share them. Yes, yes, it's very true, because even if you're not comfortable going uh, doing a video, you can always do a voice and then there are ways you know on facebook or instagram you can just put your voice up there or if you're if you want to do a video again the step one is to record yourself and see how you look how you behave how is your expression how are your hands that if you do every day it's going to give you confidence and then later you can put out on over on the social media Yes, I think um, especially with like TikTok and uh, a lot of people have been expressing themselves. I think, I think even after the pandemic, especially during the pandemic, a lot of people out of maybe to, to avoid uh, depression or isolation, they did go on platforms such as TikTok and, and shared just even their, their creativity. So I like that the new generation are more open to expressing themselves and that's building a lot of uh, community with people, but maybe people who are not, who are camera shy, as you said, there are so many solutions such as the podcast, such as I think people are using Telegram and 
so many different tools out there. You know, if, we, if your intention is that you want to share your story, there are so many tools and people like you who can facilitate that. Yes, definitely. You know, one thing I always keep this in mind and the saying that where there's a will, there is a way. And if you don't find your way out, you have to dig your way out. Yes. And that's the resilience we all have to learn, I think, yes. um, with, with the determination and resilience that we have to deal with um, during COVID. And we're all, I hope, much stronger and more, maybe we are more sensitive also to our needs. True very true and i feel there's an important thing that we all women we have to surround ourselves with women who we want to be like the successful ones and uh, so that they give us the uh, positive vibes and we we are away from the negative people and negative vibes that's true and uh, the, the sense that's why with chikara it is also about First of all, show, reminding each woman that she is powerful to find out where is her strength and to shine it and then to, to gift that to the community of women because together we are stronger and that's our like hashtag, you know, that's our slogan that, that we prosper together, that we partner, that, that we profit together, that uh, we co-create, you know, and it's our strength comes from our community um, and, and this is what I think uh, it's important to, to remember that when you share your voice, you are influencing other people's lives. So it's also important to think, what is the impact of my words? You know, uh, is it going to create something positive in the other person's life or not? Is it going to contribute to their well-being or not? Is it going to um, empower them to grow and to, to prosper or not? And this is kind of the um, energy that we're trying to bring in with the Chikara members that's amazing and uh, you know i wish you all the best for what you're doing it's beautiful i got to be a small part of this that i'm happy with that i got an honor to talk to you and know about your journey and about chikara thank you so much and i look forward to us uh, co-creating much more we always uh, hold circles with women you know to to facilitate their creative expression whether it is through art or voice or as i mentioned also martial arts you know because self-defense is also a form of self-love yes. um, and, and it all works together to help you realize your own strength and your own power um so we look forward to connecting with you also again and with the chikara members and the women and uh, uh, having uh, you know a voice circle suit yes definitely definitely we will okay now after all these series talks i have a fun segment for you and it is called the rapid fire round okay, okay. and i have three random questions which you can answer in one word or a sentence okay okay so my first question is which is your favorite food strawberries oh nice anything strawberries yes strawberries and right now like uh, i got to my friend uh, just came back from mexico and she got me like uh, strawberries that were covered with uh, chocolate with their dried strawberries it was really interesting and i feel like it's such a healthy snack uh, and lovely wow nice nice and it's oh. full of antioxidants <laughs> oh all right right <laughs> okay <laughs> My second question is, which is that one craziest thing you have ever done till date? I think going to Rio de Janeiro uh, because I didn't know people there. So usually when I travel to meet artisans or uh, yogis or I know someone in that country. And when I was in Brazil, I did not know anyone. And everyone was telling me, oh, it might be dangerous or... But, you know, like I felt it in my heart. And also at the same time, I think it was very important for my own uh, growth to be there uh, alone and to listen to the sounds of that country and uh, the history and the people and to experience the magic. And it was it turned out to be the most beautiful experience ever. 
Wow, that's so cool. I would also love to travel alone some. Yes, but it was a bit scary and risky because because it was Rio de Janeiro, you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, my last question is tell us about your secret beauty routine. Oh, cool. First of all, meditation. Um I think, uh, you know, when you're shining in your heart uh, and in your blood and in your face, it shows and it's about gratitude. You know, when I talk about meditation or a spiritual practice, it's about being really grateful, you know, that we're here, we're existing, we're connected and being grateful for all our body parts and our skin. So gratitude and meditation is the first uh, step. The second step, of course, uh, I think nurturing your skin and your body. So a lot of water, but also I love rose water. Rose water is also good because it's um, it has uh, antidepressants and uplifting traits, but also it, it connects you to your feminine essence. So um, I really like using that, whether it's on my face or as, even just as a spray, like an aromatherapy. What else? Um, the third step would be sleep. I think, um, you know, having a sleep ritual, glowing skin comes from a good night's sleep and having enough oxygen reach your skin and, and your eye area and all that stuff. Um, I think it's important to, to know when to rest. When I say sleep, it's about resting. So allowing ourselves to rest completely and giving ourselves the permission to rest and at the same time, creating a ritual, like a bedtime ritual, whether it's like a, through small prayer and, and aromatherapy and, and just like allowing yourself to sleep uh, the, the right amount of hours that your skin needs to breathe and to look beautiful. <laughs> wow, those were wonderful tips and your routine is so nice. <laughs> Thank you. You should, you should try it too. Yes, I will. I will definitely try well, that was the end of the rapid fire round and your answers were amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was exciting. Thank you so <laughs> much for hanging. It was so nice meeting you virtually and I look forward to connecting with you again. Yes, yeah, sure. And before we end this, we have our last segment where I would like to ask your advice for our listeners. I think... Um, it's important to get to know yourself. Your relationship with yourself is a lifelong one. This is the one that matters the most. A lot of times we might spend, you know, 30, 40, 50 years, sometimes not. If you put the attention that you want to learn more about you, uh, get to know who you are, what drives you, what's your passion, what excites you, what are uh, some of your strengths, what are some of your shortcomings, uh, what are things that you would like to change. Um, I think what what are things that you'd like to love even you know without changing um so that is the most important relationship to build and that is the connection that will create an authentic bond within you uh, and when you have that connection the message that you then send out to the world will create impact because it's authentic and it's true and people will resonate with it because it will speak to their authentic selves and maybe it will help them step into their authenticity. And when we all um, spread that energy and share our truths, the world will be a better place, hopefully. <laughs> yes, indeed. And that was a lovely advice. And uh, I have to thank you so much for taking time from the busy schedule and doing this podcast with me. Thank you. You're welcome, Farheen. And thank you again for all the work that you do. And um, hopefully we'll connect soon, inshallah. Yes, surely we'll do. Thank you so much, Dr. Mariam. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, listeners, if you have liked this episode, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are also on Spotify. The snippets of this podcast will be available on Facebook, Instagram, and six other podcasting platforms. Thank you for listening. You have a great day ahead. Stay safe, stay blessed. Allah Hafiz.